In this video, I want to introduce you to SQL. This is going to be a high level introduction, just telling you what it is and what it is used for. It's meant to be for somebody who's trying to get into IT or already like a manual tester and they just realize they have to learn SQL. Because any field in, in IT that you're trying to get into, they're going, you're going to hear the word SQL. Oh, you have to learn SQL. You have to learn SQL. So I just want to show you what it is, what it looks like, and how to get started. I do have a full course on SQL, basically teaching you everything you need to know um, how to write SQL, how to interact with databases. That's a full course, and I have a link in, in the description, and check it out if you want to. But in this video, I'm just going to briefly introduce you, okay? So are we going to talk about it? We're going to talk about what it is and what it is used for. I'm just going to briefly talk about how to set it up, but I'm also going to link a video that shows you in detail on how to set it up. It's super easy. It's really easy to set it up on your computer. I'm going to show you an actual demo of some SQLs, some databases, and some tables, and I'm going to just talk a little bit about why you need to know it. I kind of just did already, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit more, okay? It's going to be very little slides, just three slides, I think, and uh, we're just going to actually go and look at it, okay? So that's what it's going to be. So what is SQL? The actual SQL the abbreviation stands for Structured Query Language. It is a language we use to talk to databases. Basically, uh, we read from the database and we write into a database. And the question is, what is a database, right? So every software, almost every software, most softwares, they use databases. The data has to stay, right? When you go to a website like supersquare.com or facebook.com, how come the next time you go in, it knows about you, it knows who you are, all the information you submitted, it is there, it's available. How come, right? That data is stored somewhere. There are different types of storages. There's all kinds of storages, but database is one of the ways. They're one of the most popular ways, in fact, right? Because a little bit older than all the other things that are new now. But a database is a collection of data. Somewhere the data has to stay. Then you need to be able to access that data. So that's when SQL becomes in the picture. You need you use SQL to read that data. Also, even the first time when you write that data, when you save that data, you use SQL. So that's really what it is. So whenever you're using a website or any kind of application, a web mobile app or anything, that data needs to be stored somewhere and you need to access that data. And SQL is one of the ways, one of the most popular ways. Okay. So we're going to look at what exactly it looks like. And when we talk about SQL, in this example, I'm going to show you MySQL, but there are a bunch of other ones. There's all kinds of different uh, SQLs, particularly databases. There's a, a lot of different databases, and SQL works in most of them. So the SQL stands for structured, right? The S in SQL is structured, but there are databases that are not structured. There is a different kind of non-structured SQL, non-structured databases, and they don't use SQL, right? They use the, their own type of language. But once you learn SQL, it's really easy because now you understand the concept. It's really easy to understand, to learn the other types of uh, queries, basically. So the different type of databases, the most popular ones are like MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and MongoDB. So the first two, MySQL and, and Microsoft SQL Server, they are structured, and MongoDB is non-structured. There are quite different ones, and I just mentioned those because those are like you'll hear the words, this words quite often. Okay, so let's go look at what MySQL looks like. So, the tool I'm going to use, so the tool I'm going to use is called MySQL Workbench and MAMP. In fact, I, I don't have it turned on, but MAMP is the application I'm going to ask you to download. If you want to use, if you want to install MySQL uh, easily directly on your machine. Use MAMP. That's one of the easiest ways I found. There's a lot of ways. I'm going to, I created a video on how to do MAMP. In my course, I'm going to show, I do show all the other, a bunch of other options to run MySQL, but I'm going to link it in this video, okay? But use MAMP. So the first thing we want to do is search for MAMP on Google. All right, this is a high level just to show you. And it's, it's most likely the first thing that shows up MAMP, M A M P. Just download the app, okay? Download it in the store, whether you're on a Windows or on a Mac. It's the same thing. Just download it. Right now, show me the windows version because i was on it uh recently uh, but it looks like this this little window this is on a mac on windows it looks very similar slightly different but very similar install it run it start the server so there is a start button here the same thing on windows uh it will it will start the server okay that's one thing the another thing you, you have now you have a mysql server the way mysql works is a server client the software that runs this that runs the the database sits somewhere and you have to connect to it in our case we're going to have everything locally on our machine the second tool you're going to use is workbench okay you don't have to do it right now again you, you can look at individual uh individual videos it's actually instead of just workbench search for mysql workbench and the first thing that shows up 
Okay, my SQL workbench, my SQL workbench. Install that. That is this tool here. This is what you're going to use to connect. And you go to home, create, create a new connection. You put in the IP address, the username and password, you connect. So again, this is a high level, just showing you how it works. Okay, there's a video on exactly how to do it. So you connect to the database. Once you connect to a database, you're not going to do any, you're not going to have any data in there, but you are going to install or load some sample database. So these are some sample databases and you got it. You're going to have to look at other videos, how to set that up. All of that is created for you. Okay. Again, this one is just to show you what SQL looks like. So now you assume you've set it up. You have an SQL database or, or a MySQL database and you've connected to it. That's when you, SQL actually comes in the picture. You actually write the code, the language, the SQL language, right? So this is an example. So those are different databases. There is like a store database. This is, this is something I created on my own. It, it simulates like a database for an, an, an e-commerce store, right? When you have an e-commerce, you have orders, you have products, you have customers. All of those information sto gets stored in a database. So if we look at this example here, for example, let's look at orders. So if I right click and select rows, this will actually read the database. So it will, it will give me a query like this. Normally you write it yourself, select star from, then there is a database name or the schema name and the table name. So databases are structured. This is a structured database. So there are tables. If you ever used any kind of spreadsheet like Excel, then it looks just like that. It's, it's, a, it's a table with columns and rows and makes it easy for you to access the data. So in this case, we're looking at this table called orders. It has a list of orders. And in this case, there's four columns, but it can be many, many columns, but it can have millions and millions of rows. Think about Amazon, right? How many in, in their orders table, if they use MySQL, how many rows are there, right? There's billions and billions of rows, right? So they probably use something different than MySQL, but MySQL can handle something like that. And the advantage is you can read all of that really quickly. Like in this table, for example, we just got 5,000 rows returned because this table only has 5,000 rows. In a second, it took... It took 0 0.02 seconds, like 20% of a second um, to return 5,000 rows, right? So that's the benefit of MySQL or a database is it's super fast to access a lot of data. Let's look at another order, with another table. Like let's look at this products table. So I can duplicate it, command D, it's the same database and the table name is products. Then I can click on run and that would run and basically read this select statement just means a read statement. I'm saying go read everything from this table. Since I'm using workbench, it puts in a limit to it, but in the products table, there are 149 rows. So we got 149 rows. This is, this is very simple. Let's look at another database. For example, the employees database, this, this employees database is not something I created. Um, this is uh, available for you. This is basically made for practice. You can just search for sample employee database and and you'll get it. And I'm, I'm going to create videos on how to load, how to load those data, those sample databases. So look in the description. All the videos that accompany this video will be there. Uh, this video is just to show you what SQL is. But if you actually want to go ahead and start practicing, uh, look look for this this videos because I'm definitely going to create more videos on how to practice in addition to the full course that I have on my website. So uh, these are a bunch of employees, Aquila and World. Those three databases are common databases that people use for learning, and I'm, I'm using those here as well. So if we look at the employees table and let's, uh, employees database, there is another table called employees. I'm going to right click, select. It's going to give me a select row. This one returned 5,000 rows. I can check how many rows there are. I can do instead of star, I can do count. Count is a function, star. And I can click on this little thing to execute. And it's telling me there are 300,000, 324,000 rows in this table. Okay. So that's what this is what SQL is looks looks like. So when you're learning SQL, what you're learning is how to write this queries, how to interact with the database, the language itself, how to so I just showed you a couple of queries of how to read from the database. I'm going to show you a few more soon. But that's what you're learning. If you're if you're if you're asked to go learn SQL, what you're going to be learning is this, you're going to be learning how to write this, how do I read data, and there are a lot of rules, do I want to get all the information? Do I, how do I select specifically the information that I need? How do I get information from multiple tables at the same time? Right? It's, it's its own knowledge. You can, you, you're you going to have to learn all of that. So I have examples here. For example, this is another example of reading from the database, but from the employees database. So select and you tell it what columns to read. The, this one here, if I do star, 
okay it's going to give me every every column right this one has one two three four five six columns it's going to give me everything but maybe i just want the first name and last name then i write a query like this when i execute this i get the first name and the last name only whatever i told it to do uh, and it's going to give me all the rows right not all the rows the the application itself limits it to fifty thousand, so it's going to give me just fifty thousand out of the three hundred thousand but what if i just want two then you can add something that says limit two. If I run this, it's just going to give me two people, two employees, right? So that is another thing you learn. That's part of part of SQL. Um, you can root, you can use functions like you can calculate the average salary from this table. So if I execute this, it's going to give me just one row. The average salary is sixty three thousand. If you want to format it in a nice like so, you can put a dollar sign on it and things like that. You can do that. That's part of what you need to learn. Okay, so reading from multiple tables you can write a query like this this one would read from the department table and from from the employee department table in the list of department two different tables right it can get as you can see this was a very simple query this is a very simple query this one gets a little longer right i can show you another one look at this guy i, I just gave I, I, it might not even be realistic but queries can get this big this is actually uh it, 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 there is an error somewhere in this query but this is this query is supposed to be just one query 56 lines okay all this is just one thing so it can get really complicated it can be as simple as this or as complicated as this right so as you learn um you're gonna have to learn depending on what you need for me i've never have to all this 10 plus years of experience i've never had to write a query that is this complicated one sql 56 uh, lines i've never had to do that before but there, there are situations you could right then there are queries how do you insert into the so far we just talked about how do we read data how do we actually insert new data into the database right you do an insert earlier we were doing a select now we're doing an insert okay so there's different kinds of queries and this is what sql looks like what you just saw here is several sqls all this is a language the structured query language and this is one of the syntaxes this is a syntax to insert this is a syntax to delete from the table this is the syntax to read from the table so that's really what you're learning that's what you're learning is how do you read and how do you write from a table in, in a database okay so it is very transferable the examples i'm going to show i'm showing you right now they are my sql right if you were doing SQL, microsoft sql server a lot of this looks exactly the same with slight slight differences and my sql is the most popular so if you're going to start from scratch of course i'm going to recommend you learn from my sql because my sql is just really everywhere uh, but sql server is probably the second uh, most popular one all right so that is a demo and in terms of just why you need to learn it like use cases for example like as a tester i'm, I'm an automation engineer i write code that tests other code uh, that, that's my job right that's my uh, my profession and in my profession when i'm testing something uh, i do something in the front end for example i go and place an order i want to make sure the order is placed so i have to go to the database and check that it is actually recorded correctly that's one use case um, so in my automation, that's what I do. The code would actually go, opens the browser and goes through the whole process, places an order, and my code goes and reads the database to make sure the order actually went in. That's one of the ways to, to test. If you manual test, a lot of manual testers, you're not expected to know code, but you are expected to know SQL a lot of times, right? Because when you manually do some things, you still have to go to the database and actually check, uh, you know, it actually got recorded in the database correctly. So testers, you know, DevOps people, because they need to support developers, developers, pretty much everybody in IT uses SQL in some context, in some level, right? You don't have to be super an expert. You don't have to write queries like this, but you definitely have to be able to read from a database and write to a database. Just know the basics. So that's what I want to show you in this video. Just show you what SQL looks like and kind of like get you started. But look at the links that, that I've added and you will be able to install sql learn sql and um you know if you really want to learn sql i have a really good course that is designed for beginners specifically for beginners it starts you out with how to install it it starts you off like giving you an option of different ways of installing it just in case you run into issues with installing one or the other then just start from reading to using functions like really um like the whole spectrum and it's, it's made for beginners so check it out i'll put the link in the description 
um and uh, if you like this content you know like the video make sure you like the video make sure you subscribe i'm i'm really trying to make more videos like this targeted to beginners uh, and educational videos that's really my focus so subscribe to my channel and uh, learn a whole lot i will see you soon in a different video